looks like we are live. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, today is July 6, 2022. Uh, my name is Junior, and welcome back to another episode of the Daily Digital Design Show, uh, where we keep you all well informed of what's going on in our ever growing digital world. Uh, we've been in the digital era for quite some time now, but I feel like there's a whole lot of technology uh, that's been going on behind the scenes and a whole lot more technology. Uh, that is put right before us now here today. Um, so I just want to make sure that everybody is on the same page with that. Now, today, there are actually four things that we're going to be talking about. Um, the first one is about the Board 8 Yacht Club. If you haven't heard of the Board 8 Yacht Club before, uh, there are just a group of um, NFTs that came out, I think. Man, it's actually been a couple of years since they came out, but they exploded a whole lot last year. Um, the next thing is about procrastination and one way that uh, one gentleman is actually combating that. The next one is about soul bound tokens. I'm not sure if you heard of soul bound tokens before. Uh, they're actually a pretty, pretty new concept. I don't think, I don't believe that they're uh, fully out and rolled out yet, but um, they're quite interesting. Uh, and then the last thing is how the Van Gogh experience is changing. Uh, in my opinion for the better is becoming a little bit more immersive. Uh, so I definitely want to make sure you guys check that out. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for joining me here today. Uh, like I said, our first one here today is all about the Board 8 Yacht Club. Uh, so what's going on with the Board 8 Yacht Club is that there are, well, I guess first off, as we all know, um, the crypto slash um, NFT industry has been taking a huge downturn. Uh, it's kind of like a crypto winter right now, which I spoke on a couple episodes ago. There's a big downturn in the market. Um, so a lot of people aren't really making that much money flipping NFTs. They're seeing their value of their NFTs, especially Board 8 Yacht Club. Uh, they're seeing their value actually go down the past couple of days, past couple of months. And um, they have to do something a little bit different. They have to switch the game up a little bit. And what they found was that there is a company uh, called Mouse Mouse, Bet, Mouse Belt Labs. And they came out with a concept called Board Jobs. Uh, this is basically just a bo job board. Uh, not to be confused with the term board, B-O-A-R-D. Uh, they're calling it board as in I am board, B-O-R-E-D. To kind of piggyback off that board eight yacht club theme, but they're called board jobs, and it's a website which I have here pulled up as well. Uh, it's a website in which the board eight yacht club members, as well as other NFT holders, can actually um, upload their NFTs. As you can see here, they have all of these um, board eight yacht club holders they have their NFTs on here. It shows the image of it. Uh, it shows their rarity number here. It also shows uh, the different attributes that each of them have. And people like me, people like you, anybody across the world can actually come here and hire them. Uh, essentially, if we wanted to use uh, this board ape here, let's see, 498, uh, we can just come here, click on it, and we can hire it. Um, and also, uh, if we owned it, we can claim it. Uh, I believe so far right now, the current ones that are on here, um, they reached out to all of the board eight yacht club holders and then they asked them hey do you want to be on a platform so all of them said yes it was like 200 300 of them or something like that i can't remember uh with the total count of board apes that are out there in total um but a lot of them actually did come on the website to actually be uh placed on here for hire um and that's essentially it i believe from what this says they're going to start rolling it out <clears throat> rolling it out to the uh crypto punks community uh i think crypto kitties where did i read that at um, gutter cats, um, the mutant apes, the crypto punks, all of that in the next couple of weeks, uh, they're going to be allowing them to go on their platform as well, uh, to be essentially put to work. And this is a, not really a new concept. There's already been people that's been using their NFTs, um, for hire. Uh, some people have been making movies off, off of them, um, little short animated movies, um, other people has been using them for commercials, uh, advertisements, all of those good things. So this is just another stream of income that these NFT holders have. 
Um, and this is just another easier way for them to be found uh, by people who are actually looking to hire them out. Uh, so in my opinion, I think this is a, a good step in the right direction for NFTs, uh, especially for people who create, you know, unique artwork and stuff like that. Um, again, you don't have to just let it sit in a museum or a virtual museum for that matter. Uh, you can actually put this out into work. I do know a couple of people out there who created actual artwork that was put in movie scenes. Um, so you can actually put yours in like an animated, you know, movie or something like that as well. All right, and so the next thing here would be the Van Gogh experience. Uh, Van Gogh was a brilliant artist um, way, I won't say way back in the day, but way back in the day. Uh, and he came out with a lot of art pieces, a lot of artwork um, that you can really only see in museums. But now it looks like they are coming out with a method for you to be able to see his artwork uh, in a new immersive kind of way, not just virtual reality. Um, but as you can see here, a humongous room with all of his artwork really just coming to life. Now, I did want to take a quick pause there. I don't know how I feel about people going to museums and um, going to immersive experiences like that and really just sitting down looking at yourself. I know one lady in the video was kind of like recording it, taking a picture of it, which is, you know, perfectly fine. Uh, but I did see a couple of people on there uh, that were just looking at their cell phones and um, yeah, kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. I mean, that just looks amazing. So, I don't know about you guys, but I actually think that is really, really cool. Uh, if you have not heard about the Van Gogh experience before, I definitely would say check it out. Uh, you can go to the website, which is uh, VanGoExpo.com. Uh, you can actually click here, choose your city. They have different cities in the Americas. Um, so it may be at a local city near you, Miami, Las Vegas, Houston, uh, Boston, Dallas, New York. Uh, even if you are in Europe, they have Bristol, they have Brussels, uh, they have London, Berlin, uh, Naples, uh, Beijing, all those cities there so you can actually go see this van gogh experience uh i plan on actually seeing it hopefully i'll be able to uh, make it someplace that has it so we'll see how that works out and then the next one is all about procrastination i know procrastination is a uh, really big thing that a lot of people do unfortunately uh, they don't get the time well i don't want to say they don't get the time everybody has the same time in the day uh, but they don't utilize their time quite wisely but this one man in Tokyo, I believe, yeah, Tokyo has started a anti-procrastination cafe. Let me, let me see if I can get rid of this ad here. There we go. Uh, anti-procrastination cafe. So what happens is that this gentleman here, uh, he allows you to come into his cafe. You tell him your name. You tell him what you're working on. And you tell him your time frame, whether it's one hour, two hour, three hours. You just basically let him know, hey, I need to get something done help me out <laughs> you know um, he's not actually going to help you do anything except for just stay on your back about it uh, you can ask him say hey <clears throat> uh, I just needed an environment in which I can work and then really get my work done because at home uh, or at the office I'm just like super drained I uh, can't get any work done so he allows you to sit there uh, for a fee of course I think it said 150 yen uh, which is one dollar fifteen cents for the Americas um, and then that's for only 30 minutes and then 300 an hour every hour after that. So 300 an hour would be uh, $2 and 30 cents, I guess, uh, in, in American dollars, rather that's 300 yen for an hour. Um, 
but yeah, it's basically he's just going to let you sit there, let you do your work, um, unless you ask him to, hey, give you a little boost, and he's going to be, you know, on your back about it. He's going to stand right behind you. He's going to make sure you're actually working. Uh, at the end of it, you know, he's going to ask you how much you got done. Uh, and from what he said, he's, he's seen a lot of productivity, and people also have seen productivity in it as well. Uh, they were able to complete pretty much all of their work in what they considered to be a whole day. They were able to complete it in three hours uh, or what they considered to be three hours worth of work. They completed it in one hour. So um, I don't know. I, I think I would try it out. Um, I do have a little bit of procrastination issues myself as well. Um, but I don't think I'm a huge major procrastinator. Uh, and sometimes, you know, for people like me, procrastination actually just works. Um, just going to be completely and 100% honest. Um, wait until the last minute is like the best creative time for me as well. Um, so I'm not sure who else is like that. Uh, and sorry about that, guys. My dog keeps uh, hitting the table and moving my camera screen. So uh, you may see a shift here and there. Uh, but moving on to the last bit of the show, uh, which is soul bound tokens. Um, when I first heard of this, I'll just be quite honest. When I heard soul bound uh, something being bound to your soul. I have my little thoughts about it, um, but I am a very open-minded person. I went on to read the uh, paper on it, read on to for you a couple of the articles on it as well. Um, here's one that I found um, by Decrypt. I followed Decrypt, and um, this was published June 9th, 2022, so not even a full month ago. But what it looks like is Mr. Vitalik, the co-founder of Ethereum, as well as I think like two or three other co-founders uh, are trying to make a token that is attached to people, essentially. Um, it's going to basically utilize NFTs token um, that, that cannot, this is a big portion of it, that cannot be interchangeable or that are, that are not interchangeable. Um, so basically meaning that you can't, you know, trade them with anyone else. You can't sell them to anyone else. Uh, they don't really hold any um, uh, monetary value or anything like that. Uh, but they are just going to be attached to you and they are going to provide information about you, uh, information about your qualifications, uh, information about certificates that you may have, information about, um, like, say, for example, your driver's license. Um, also like if you have any accreditations from school or something like that, if you graduated college, uh, let's say for example, you're a doctor and you need to confirm that you're a doctor, uh, any hospital you go work to can just say, Hey, pull up your, what they call a soul wallet. They call it a soul wallet. Um, pull up your wallet and then let us see what kind of accreditations you have on there. Um, and then you can do that. Uh, one big thing to point out is that no one person has to have just one, sold wallet attached to them. Uh, you can have one wallet for, let's say, um, all of your like certificates from the Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, um, I don't know, um, drama club in high school and all that stuff um, that just shows all of your accreditation certificates while another one could be more identity based. Uh, if you have like a um, driver's license, if you have like a passport, if you have like a visa or whatever, uh, all of that identity information can be in one sold wallet while the other wallet can hold all of the other uh, stuff on there. Um, yeah, they're called SBTs, and they were proposed back in May 2022 by economist and social technologist E. Glenn Wheel, lawyer Pooja Olhaver, and Ethereum creative Vitalik Buterin. Uh, there is one portion here that I kind of want to read to you guys. Uh, as I mentioned, um, these are non-transferable um, that represents commitments, credentials, and affiliations. Um, the way that they will work is that basically a provider, I guess you will call it, will provide you with their token. So for example, uh, a college or even a high school, uh, secondary school will say, hey, this person graduated from school. Now we can go ahead and issue them their diploma through that, um, uh, basically their soul bound diploma, I would say, and then issue it to them. Uh, and it'll go in their wallet and it, you know, it can keep up with them all, all throughout the years. Uh, I think this is the portion here I want to read. Uh, within DSOC, so again, DSOC is, um, stands for Decentralized Society. Uh, within a DSOC 
context, SBTs are issued by and held within accounts known as souls. Uh, souls are essentially wallets that hold SBTs and are used to establish provenance, the origin of something, and reputation. Souls can be associated with individuals, organizations, or other entities. Uh, importantly, souls are not intended to have a one-to-one -one representation to humans. That is, a human can have multiple souls in DSOC. For example, your high school could have a soul that issues diplomas as SBTs to its graduates, all of whom has souls that hold their respective diploma SBT. You receive this SBT in your credential soul, where you also hold SBTs for your Girl Scout badges and National Honor Society SBTs. This credential soul, however, is separate from your identification soul, which holds your driver's license and passport. Uh, SBTs in and of themselves are simply descriptive and representative. Their power and utility in part comes from how SBTs held in souls interrelate to form emergent communities based on verified affiliations, commitments, and credentials. All right. Um, so, yeah, I don't... I feel like this is... I don't know. I feel like this is a, a, a positive thing um, for the decentralized community. Um I really can't see any downsides to this. I know only probably the only downside, I believe everything is going to be on chain from what I read. Everything will be on chain. Um, so keeping your identity on chain would be, you know, one of those things you have to worry about. Uh, it would be nice if you had more of a um, uh, off chain, like the um, decentralized identifications, DIDs. I believe all of those are off chain. You can look into those as well. Uh, I'll probably be doing a show on DIDs um, later on. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that's a, um, I think that's a actually a pretty good thing. Um, keeping all of these credentials. Cause that to me, in my opinion, that was like the whole basis of NFTs. Uh, the non-fungible tokens is basically showing ownership of something. Uh, so now you have this version of showing ownership of your actual life, that all the stuff that you've done, all the accreditations that you've gone through, uh, instead of putting like a plaque on a wall, uh, my high school diploma and college degree actually I have no clue where it's at to be honest um, but I have that accreditation I just you know don't know where my degree is to show for it uh, with those soul bound tokens I'll be able to keep it um, on chain again I'm not sure how I feel about that but it's actually there anybody can go view it anybody can check it out um, and kind of go from there uh, so I would say you guys let me know what you think. I'm definitely interested to hear it. Please do check out the links all in the description below. Uh, and until next time, I will see you guys later. Have a good one.